think it was either Sue Wan or Yum Boo, and we stayed the night there. Now, when we when we uh, uh, stopped, and during the summer months, these people dig. They have a special spade uh, instrument for digging the peat out of the ground, and the 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 it's stacked the peat is stacked up, stacked up during the during the summer to dry, and then at the end of the the, the summer they bring it in and stack it up beside the houses. Now these are only wee cottages in Northern Ireland, and they stack them up. And that's the fuel for the whole winter. Now, having said that, the same applies in Korea. You know about the A-frame? You know the A-frame? No. A-frame. Famous thing in Korea. A. Eh? Two handles on like a forklift. And the peasant has a crook, no, a stick with a crook. And when he goes out, he plants it on the ground and he puts the hook on it and sits there. And he goes around and he gets all sorts of stuff, jungle grass or twigs or... And anyway, at the end of the day, it would be piled up with stuff. And he would go back to his cottage and he'd put all that stuff beside the house. Now that was the winter fuel. Now, cooking. They, they, they just have the one room and at the back they have a kitchen, as you would call it. Now the kitchen comprised of the roof and two sides. The rest was open. Now, built at the side of the house was in uh, big clay. They have their cooking utensils, like two, two or three pots. And that was permanent there. That's what they cooked. Now, the, all that stuff was there for the fuel to light the fire and uh, do their cooking. Now, I have I observed this before, seeing what they did, and uh, I looked in and had matches, and I got some of the fuel and put it underneath and lit the fire, and what happens was, the Koreans were very well advanced, underfloor heating. Well, as soon as they lit that, they lit that fire, all the heat went underneath, as well as cooking, it went underneath, and heated the floor. Now the floor was baked clay again, and baked clay, I say, holes retains the heat for ages afterwards. And what happened was, uh, the, the, the smoke in that went out through the back to the chimney, whatever it was, and inside about half an hour, and it was freezing when we were in there, half an hour you'd take our jackets off, and with a great night's sleep, but so primitive, but so very good. And that just shows you the ingenuity of the, of the Korean peasants. <laughs> and never forget it. Leave the water bottle of your cup, which was aluminium, and uh, you also had a you wish it was what they call a Tommy cooker. A Tommy cooker came in a wee, wee square box, uh, cardboard, and we took it out this wee metal thing with wee wee uh, uh, sides on it, so you could put your 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 either your mess tin. I don't know what you know what a mess tin is. It's what you you cook in individual cooking. It's two parts and. Uh, you do your cooking and that sort of thing. And uh, well, on, on the wee stand, they had uh, something like, if you ever remember, fire lighters, tell you a fire, with these wee small, wee small tablets. And they didn't create any flame to save the enemy. It just like a glow and you cooked your food in that. And that's how you ate and, on the field, you know. And everything was there for you. The, Americans, the American rations was far superior to ours, you know. Oh yeah. How about the cold? Do you remember the cold? Oh yes, very much so. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Not only that, when we went out there, we just had. It's hard to explain, so you need to see, see pictures. We had just had a battle, what they call a battle with a tunic and trousers, khaki. You know, your your arms on sort of thing, and uh, the Americans and all these other and, and the Australians and Canadians, they had their uh, combat suits, and they had liners inside. If you remember liners, you could zip them out in the summertime and put them back in in the winter, you know. We didn't have that. All we had was, you'll see a picture, of a great coat. We called it the great coat. Like a top coat. And your battle dress. And that's all you had. And when it rained or got wet, that was just too bad, you know. To get it okay in, the, in, in good weather, but not in the, the winter. We were, we were ill-equipped. And not only that, we only had the, the uh, uh, weapons. Uh, brain gun was the main weapon. A very good weapon. Automatic fire. And then we had the rifle, the point three oh three Lee Enfield, a very famous weapon. But it was bolt action. You, you hadn't, you know, quick fire. You had to keep lo loading and unloading every time. And you had a magazine of ten rounds in on on the on the rifle. No, no, no. I never had any Korean food. Oh, no. even now? 
Well, I've tried it on, on the way out to Korea with Karen here. Uh, I thought it would... Uh, they went around and asked me what you want, English or Korean, you know. So I tried Korean, but it was a bit too complicated. Because you had so much, you had so much little tubes of different things to add, you know. <laughs> Wherever I got through it. <laughs> but having said that, uh, you were talking about the food. On the, la on the last day of our last visit in, in May there, uh, I forget the name of the, uh, the Patriots uh, boss, as I call it. It was a woman, and she had a seven-course meal for us on the final night of the uh, before departure and went through seven courses and you'd hardly see what was on the on the plate, you know, it was very good, you know. But it was different from what I got on the on the aircraft. <laughs> Korean food at the time, but did you try Korean liquor at the time? No, the only thing we got was two bottles a day of uh, Asahi, Japanese beer. Oh. Uh, no, I haven't said that. Coming going out on the ship, the Empire Pride as I said, it was a terrible ship. You had a hole in the wall, you know, just a like, the whole square hole, a square in the wall, and you, you're issued out two bottles of uh, Asahi beer. That's what you forgot. Oh, I would have never guessed that. So yes. no no soju, huh? Yeah. No Korean alcohol? No, no, it was all uh, Asahi beer. Oh, okay. Do you think you'll see a unified Korea in your lifetime? It's hard to say. I'd like to see it. I would definitely like to see it because uh, it's a great pity of those poor people uh, having no, the knowledge of what has went on there, the starvation, even the, 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 the uh, soldiers not be able to get paid in that and the treatment of the children, you know, and all those big pompous parades with their machinery and rockets and what have you. It's, it's a terrible sight. Well, I'm hoping for peace not only on the Korean Peninsula but in all of Ireland as well. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. 10 o'clock, 2200 hours. And what happened was, as we were going out, and actually lights out and everything, and we're going across, and I remember going up around this hill here, and in my in the dark and the windscreen, I could see heavy gun, sorry, it was heavy gunfire, consolidated gunfire. And the, you see the tracer bullets on the reflection of my windscreen. And I said to the guy who was with me, this is great, this is the 8th Royal Irish Hussars. Now, 8th Royal Irish Hussars are tanks, Centurion tanks. And I said to the guy with me, this is great, they're giving us cover and fire to get out. What happened was, we found out later, the, me me uh, the medical officer and his driver in the Ford Willys Jeep was quite some uh, distance behind me. Apparently the, the uh, uh, Chinese had did a horseshoe movement. Instead of coming across and holding it, they came that way, a horseshoe moving, and closed it. And the people behind me, that was them trapped and taken prisoner of war. Uh, I'll never forget that. <laughs> well, I'm surprised you don't know about the A-frame. A-frame is famous.